It is March 16th, 2023, and you're watching The Code Report. Well, hello, my fellow Proomters. Yesterday, Midjourney released its version 5 model in alpha, and the AI images it can produce are shockingly realistic. Like the guy with the shocked face that got you to click on this video is 100% artificial. As a programmer and content creator who recently lost his job to AI, I've been looking for a new line of work. My initial thought was to get into modeling, because my mom says I'm extremely good looking. Unfortunately, I found out that models are now obsolete. It's now possible to generate them in all shapes and sizes, and you'll never know the difference unless you look really closely at the fingers. There are many different companies and projects competing to be the best generative image model in 2023. Stable Diffusion is the leading open source project, then you have tons of closed source projects like Dolly from OpenAI, and countless others trying to monetize this space. But in my opinion, Midjourney is the most impressive place to prune. The images just pop. They're vibrant, realistic, and aesthetically pleasing. For that, we shouldn't be thanking Midjourney, but all the photographers and artists who unwillingly provided the dataset to create this black magic that will make their sons and daughters obsolete. Interestingly, the US Copyright Office just recently ruled that generative AI art cannot be copyrighted, because you need to show proof of human authorship. If you take some AI art and modify it as a human, then it could become eligible, but it's reviewed on a case-by-case -case basis. That's good news, because it means grifters can't just prune something out and license it to you as a copyrighted work. The ones who will make the most bank in this movement are the ones who provide the models, like Midjourney and OpenAI. OpenAI started as a non-profit, but then transitioned to for-profit when they realized how much mother effing money they were going to make on this thing. In any case, I'm happy to pay 10 bucks a month for Copilot, 20 bucks a month for ChatGPT, and 10 bucks a month for Midjourney. Together, they put almost all of human creativity at your fingertips, making you a demigod in the digital world. At the same time, it will likely ruin creativity, because who wants to create art when you know some company is just going to steal it and remix it into an infinite number of variations to the point where nobody can tell the difference? It takes the incentive away from true human talent. Feast your eyes on this toad. Had you told me Alex Gray painted it, I'd believe you. But he didn't. I'm guessing his artwork is in the Midjourney dataset, but this is my artwork. I proved it at fair and square. And here's how you can do it too. Midjourney is handled entirely in Discord. There's currently no API, but I imagine that's coming someday. Once in the Discord, all you have to do is go into one of the newbie channels or your direct messages and type in the imagine slash command. From there, just describe whatever image you have in your imagination and let it go to work. Congratulations, you can now put Proomped Engineer on your resume. It'll create four different variations of your idea. Then you can choose one of them to make even more variations, or you can choose to upsample them individually. Currently, version 5 is an alpha, and if you want to use it, use the V flag at the end of your prompt. To get highly realistic images of humans, I would also recommend adding the Q flag as 2 to increase the quality. There's all kinds of different parameters you can use to change the output. Some of the most useful ones include aspect ratio to change the shape of the image, and chaos to control the amount of craziness. The higher the chaos, the more random stuff you might get in the output image. What's especially awesome though is that you can also provide a starter image, which can just be a hyperlink to any image URL on the internet. That means if you have a long lost relative, you can bring them back to life in new artwork and photos. It's not going to be deep fake accurate, but it's still pretty creepy. All of this generative AI stuff might seem terrifying if you're a digital creator. However, there is one glimmer of hope. It's very possible that you were made with AI. And if you can't tell the difference, then what does it matter? This has been The Code Report. Thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next one.